Julie. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to say uh, thanks so much, uh, uh, Mr. Giroux. Uh, thanks so much for being here today, for your hard work, and thank you for your extraordinary service to Canadians. Thank you. Um, you know, in, in the conversation today, I was I was thinking if I was a Davenport resident. So Davenport is my riding in downtown West Toronto. I was thinking, what is it that they would think? So I think if they were listening and they were hearing about the fact that our deficit might go uh, past $252 billion and that, you know, our collective debt levels in Canada would go beyond $900 billion, I think there would be a lot of concern. I think, though, when uh, the average uh, Canadian sort of then goes to, well, what would have been the cost of us doing nothing or of being frozen with fear because of these debt levels? What would be the cost of doing nothing uh, to our economy, uh, to, our, to our banks in terms of bankruptcy? So uh, in terms of our health, what would have been the cost? I think that, uh, as mentioned in our discussion, the cost would have been even worse than where we're at today. I also would uh, probably take some comfort to know that Canada is doing relatively well in our G7 in comparison. We were doing well before this pandemic and we continue to line up fairly well right now. And then I think I'd also take uh, some comfort in what um, Governor Polos had mentioned the last time he was with us when in response to a question as to whether or not Canada uh, would be, you know, did he think Canada would be able to uh, re uh, re recoup or sort of reestablish growth of uh, the anticipated four to six percent GDP loss of this pandemic. He said there's no reason to believe that we couldn't recover that growth and two, that we wouldn't actually be able to make positive structural changes. And then last week, the prime minister, when questions to the uh, of the media to him were, you know, what are your thoughts about uh, moving forward in terms of the economy and how to support the Canadian economy? He said, the Canadian government is very much focused on building back better. So we that is where we're focused on. And I, I really take uh, to heart your encouragement to our government to say, make sure that as soon as possible, any type of economic recovery plan is, is, uh, is actually put forward to Canadians as soon as possible. So my question to you, Mr. Giroux, uh, building back better. There's a lot of opportunities we have. Uh, it's a generational opportunity to actually rebuild better, both our economy and our society. And I wonder if you might have uh, any uh, ideas or any contributions about how do we build back better. Um, thank you for uh, the compliments and thanks to all of you who have complimented the work of the office. Um, building back or having uh, a stimulus package I've already responded, I think, to Madame May, who had a similar question. So as long as these are productivity-enhancing measures, uh, I think it has prospects for longer-term growth or inducing longer-term growth. So I've already talked about um, in, sorry, investments that facilitate uh, transportation, uh, trade, or communications. Um, uh, research is also an area that is productivity enhancing. Um, it can be hit and miss, but once you hit a goal mine, then it rewards uh, investments in research. Um, so uh, it's not my area of expertise. I'm not in the business of pro providing policy advice, uh, but you, you get the general gist of, of what I said and, and what I mean. So as long as these are productivity enhancing investments, um, I think that's something that would have the most benefit while also providing economic stimulus. And the question of whether or not there is a need for economic stimulus is also a bit premature to answer. It depends what type of recovery we have, but assuming that there is a need for economic stimulus, these would be the types of investments that would make the most sense from an economic perspective. And so thank you for that. And Mr. Giroud, do you know of any other uh, country that's already uh, uh, produced some sort of an economic recovery plan? Uh, not to my knowledge. What I've seen is mostly deconfinement or resumption of businesses, but I haven't seen uh, economic stimulus plans by countries. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means that I'm not aware of any right now. I've been quite busy with uh, uh, the current report and costings of government measures. 
Okay, perfect. And then just maybe one last tiny question. Uh, because of the pandemic, do you see in any way the role of the of your office changing, either being enhanced or changing, or there needing to be something more to be done as a result of this pandemic and us coming out of it? Um, I see the absence of information uh, that is credible and nonpartisan. Um, well, I, let me rephrase that. I see the role of the office being enhanced as a result of the pandemic. There is clearly an appetite for nonpartisan and objective information and analysis when it comes to the state of the nation's economy and national finances. Um, so the electoral period last year showed that we can provide credible and needed analysis and information costings in that case. And the current pandemic, while government seems to be, is busy coming up with uh, um, economic measures and support measures, it hasn't paid that much attention to providing a fiscal picture. So the role of the office, uh, I think, was uh, is appreciated by many stakeholders, including parliamentarians and, and Canadians, when it comes to providing a sense of the magnitude of expenditures so far. So I clearly see a need for the, the office, in, both in times of uh, economic growth and dire economic circumstances like this one. Merci. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And